Joel, how are you, bro? Very well. How are you? Good to see you, man. Touch. Good to touch. Let's touch. Let's, let's touch. pretend that we haven't already touched before <laughs> the cameras rolled. So um, I feel quite, uh, I feel quite bad because you brought some food in. I did. Yeah. You look, you look like you're, you're hungry. I like, want it so bad, but I'm like going to leave it because I know as soon as I unleash that top, <laughs> this beautiful smelling room is going <laughs> to smell like salmon. Because it's sushi, right? It's sushi. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just going to sip upon this wonderful aloe vera. <laughs> I love those drinks. They are so good. Love them. Love them. They are. It's just like. When so, did you first discover them? Can you remember? Quite the a moment. few years ago, and I think. There's this weird thing where, you, uh, first of all, you think it's healthy because it's got aloe vera. Yeah, in it. I did the same thing. And then you realise it's like it's like tangfastics in water, <laughs> yeah. and you're just basically you're basically just drinking down gelatin. <laughs> Haribo. Oh, oh my god, it's so damn good. I it love a good. drink with a bit of chew in it. You know, you're like, <laughs> me oh, too. It's yeah. just a drink. It's just a drink. No, it's not. It's, it's food. A, it's a nice surprise. It's a food love, too. lovely surprise. I love a mix of food and drink <laughs> at the same time. So how have you been? You've not long got back from Australia, right? Um, yeah. Just got back a couple of days ago. The tan is rapidly fading. <laughs> now you still got a, like a, a nice it's little glow going healthy on. Healthy glow. It's, it's healthy. Yes. It's healthy, bro. Beard's there as well. It's slowly It was longer back. before. Last time I saw you, I saw you at that event. I shaved it off. Did, did I tell you? you? Completely. So I shaved it off for the for the sake of a funny link in a TV show. I was, um, if, if the listeners do not know, um, I was... Um, uh, I was doing I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, Extra Camp, which is yeah, the like, yeah, sort yeah. of extra show. And really fun and interesting, fun things for me to do. And uh, I wrote a lot of, I, wrote, I went in early to like write the scripts and stuff. Right. Just try and put my own stamp on it. And, yep. um, and it's hard, you know, because it's, you're writing a brand new hour show every day about a show that's, just it's like happening they're still editing the main yeah. show as we go and so we get there and we're still we've got like this muddled program to look at <laughs> and uh you try your best to write some sort of links and jokes on it and then they come in and they go oh no we've cut that and like, <laughs> oh, i've just written some really good stuff yeah yeah because it's, it's a living breathing thing isn't it it's like yeah it's, like it's still it's still happening while you guys until really stuff. late you yeah, know yeah and then um one of the people in the jungle amir khan uh, shaved his beard off at one point and I thought he was brilliant in the job he was well, great like, wasn't he <laughs> so funny <laughs> such a good character and um yeah and he shaved his beard off, and they didn't mention it in the main show and I was like oh we've got to mention it and so I thought uh, I'll because I've had my beard for like three years I'll just like we'll go for a break and whilst the break happens I shaved my beard off <laughs> oh my and I just God. came back from the break and then didn't mention it <laughs> And I thought that would be so funny. What happened on social media? That Everyone went mad? mental. We like, what? I just went away to have a coffee and a, a different person is sat there. I looked mental. I forgot. And like, it's, it, was, it was like a day of me going, Whoa, who's that? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I was thinking I was mugged every time I went to the bathroom. Brilliant. Really, it was, brilliant. Yeah, it was mad. But I'm happy to be back. It's very nice. Um, jet lag. You feeling okay? I love jet lag. Who loves jet lag, Joel? Uh, this guy right here sat right opposite you. I, I what do you love it. about it? I just, I'm so productive <laughs> because like I wake up super early in the morning yeah. and I, I get everything done before <laughs> like everyone else is awake. <laughs> I've been so productive today. This is like the last thing I have to do today and it's only midday. <laughs> it's only midday. It's right. so great. I've been going to the gym in the mornings nice. and you know, I've been eating good. I mean, you know, admittedly. I fall asleep at 7.30, <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm no fun in the evenings. Yeah, yeah. The evenings are overrated. Totally, totally. I'm quite happy to go from the highest point of the day to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about um, I'm a Celebrity. So uh, it's a live show, obviously. Yeah. How was that? Auto cues and I things mean, like that? I mean, it was mad. It was really different for me. Um, I... I mean, I, I started as, as you did through MTV yeah. and... You actually started, so I left and then you came in afterwards, yeah. didn't you? And I was, I was really happy when I saw you on screen because I was like, he's nothing like me. No comparisons. <laughs> hey, we look very similar, Ricky, okay? <laughs> Don't know what anyone says. The, um, yeah, it was really interesting. It was, a, it was a really different thing for me to do and daunting and scary. And, but once you realise that live TV is fine, it's yeah. just like... They don't, you put less pressure on yourself. It's, you know, start off, because as a comedian, you're like, every joke's got to land, every right. bit's got to work, you know, and you craft your sort of torture or whatever to, to be this perfect, unbreakable thing. Right. And 
and then you got you do a live show and you, you you've just got to go you know what's out of my control it's fine yeah. do as much as you can and then relax and enjoy it yeah and make mistakes and it's funny you have to you kind fine. of have to bask because doing our radio show the breakfast yeah. show you have to kind of bask in when things go wrong yeah that's normally when the gold happens normally totally yeah and it's mad when you realize that i used to love it every day i would sit and watch ant and deck rehearse yeah and then watch them do the main show and i just learned so much what's their what are their rehearsals like they do they play it like it's the real thing and it's so interesting yeah. and they really like find and it's like it'll be like four minutes till they're live on air and they're still like changing the script tweaking and stuff. tweaking stuff and going like oh put that in i'll put that and they're super chill about it like nobody's running around and go crazy <laughs> and then four minutes and then the, they start the show and and they're just so good at it yeah and it was so nice to be around them and they were so supportive and um I felt like towards the end we were like all right at it. Yeah, yeah. You know, the last show I was like, oh, I think I, I've got it. <laughs> and then I was like, nah, I won't do uh, it. It's finished now. It's done now. It's done. <laughs> but it's, uh, it, is, it is hard. I, I look at people like yourself and, um, and I'm like, oh, you guys are really good at it. I don't think I'm naturally very good at presenting. So it's just kind of trying to uh, sort of fix it to who I am as a see, comedian. I, see, I think you are. I, just, I think you probably are, you're probably too hard on yourself because obviously doing what you do, you yeah. have to kind of be your biggest critic. Yeah, and I'm trying to not be that guy that's always the downer, you know? I'm like, because <laughs> as a comedian, downer. you can come off stage and beat yourself up and be like, oh, that was bad, it's fine, whatever, because it's just you. But yeah. when it's a massive team of people, if you come off and be constantly like, oh, I messed up that bit, oh, <laughs> duh, 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 everyone just thinks you're like Debbie Downer, annoying <laughs> yeah, person, yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. just like, so talk to me about writing the scripts and things like that. So obviously, did they have a, a team that works for you and you kind of just go, That's, this is shit. That's I'm exactly not saying what that. I do. I throw <laughs> hot coffee over the writers that are already there and then I leave. Um, I, it's, I mean, the schedule is so mad. Yeah. Do you say schedule or schedule? I say schedule. Yeah, that's what I think. Bonds, interesting. Bonds, schedule, schedule, yeah, schedule. Schedule, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Schedule American. Yeah, I think, I think so. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, so I uh, so you wake up. I get woken up at like, or I uh, I wake up at like ten in the evening because wow. you stay on the English time. Obviously, yeah. it's live in the UK. Of course. And um, wake up at ten in the evening and then get picked up ten thirty. It's about a forty-five minute drive into set, and then um, immediately I get in and I watch the episode. Mm which is usually, it takes about an hour, and then write jokes as I go, because it's literally like you can't, there's no time. There's no time to breathe. There's yeah. no time to think <laughs> and write it. Like, you have to have an instinct of like, oh, that's the joke I'll do, cool, that'll be it, right. you know? You haven't really got time to think about it too much. Yeah. And um, and then uh, you, I would go, there's a writer who's great, and his name's Steve, and he's brilliant, and um, he would sort of write a bare bones of the episode and uh, you know, write all the stuff for Scarlet, and then I would kind of go through it and go like, oh, I think these are the big jokes of the, the, the episode. Yeah. And because it, it's different for Ant and Deck because they would write, they, they're, they're writers, they kind of, it's off the back of a VT, so they would have a specific VT of the show. Yeah. And then off the back of that or before it, they can do a bit about like, oh, that happened, and that, uh, specific lines yeah. and stuff. Yeah. We're an hour later, so you can't be that specific, it can't be about a line that someone said, it has to be like the basically the four main beats of the episode. Yep. Um, and so you just gotta write like, fifth, and it's, a, it's an hour of live television, so it's like, it's a, they've got like 15 minutes of of stuff to write, yeah. whereas we've got like an hour yeah, to write. It's insane, it's insane. And, and it's mad. How did you, uh, what was the interaction like with, with Scarlett, obviously? She That's was great. Yeah, because you, so you guys were on the show the year before, did that help? It was so wonderful. I, I mean, I couldn't have hoped for a better team of people. Like we really connected, like me and Scarlett and Joe just kind of felt like we've been friends for years. And I think she is so good at it. Yeah. In, in a completely different way to me. Yeah. And and Joe is very good at it in a completely different way to both of us. So yeah. I think we just really worked and the, and everyone loved it. And like, honestly, it was, I was, we were so lucky. It's so easy to get negativity nowadays. Yeah, yeah, and, of course. Um, 
And, you know, apart from people saying that my voice is a bit annoying, it's <laughs> Did they say kind that? of fine. Are you one of those people? Do you watch Twitter? Do you, do you kind of like delve in? Bit, yeah. I don't. I don't look at Can you not? I don't look at anything. Oh, really? Anything. No. Because ultimately, you know if you've done a good job or if you haven't done a good job. I've and it's only going to make it you... worse <laughs> if you look. It's only going to make it worse. So I just don't look. I mean, I've been trolling you for years. <laughs> so I'm so glad that you haven't been going it. The... Um, I would love to have that. I would love to be able to not look at it. Yeah. I pick my times to look at it. Yeah, yeah. I think if I know that I've had a weird one or a bad one, I just kind of don't because I, I'm giving myself enough grief, let alone yeah. anyone else giving it to me. But it's, um, yeah, I, I just, uh, I'm very insecure. And someone <laughs> saying that I look pretty makes me feel so great. <laughs> you are very pretty. You're Thank very you pretty so man. Much. You're very so pretty nice man. Your, as are you, as are you. <laughs> So talk to me about the campmates. Um, they were they were a good bunch this year, right? Yeah, they were. I mean, it was so weird because for me, I did experience it the year before in such a completely different capacity. Yeah. And and it was so mad just to be back and on the other side of things. Yeah. And and the campmates were they were great. And it was so weird to be watching these people and scrutinizing over every single little detail. Did you just do. constantly find yourself just going, oh my God, I remember how that felt at that moment. And oh, I know what they're going through right now. And... It's mad. It's mad. And then you, you just, and it's weird to think that people were scrutinizing over us in exactly the same way. Like, yeah. you know, you watch the episode and we'd all come in and be like, oh my God, that person's such a dick. And <laughs> oh, that person's so lovely and I love them. And they're so wonderful. And yeah. you really get so invested over these 22 days in these, random people and it's uh it's, it's madness it's absolutely madness and, and then they sort of leave and you don't really see them again right, you know right, it's right, like right. You, in your life you kind of just move on it's, yeah it's so weird and, and, and as you said amir was so great and you were when you were on the show the year before yeah you had me hooked because obviously I know, I know you yeah so i was like looking out for you i was like come on Come on, Joel, do this. But you had me hooked from the moment when you were on the beam. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. Bit, I was like, he's gonna be brilliant. Uh, just you were just you were just so entertaining to watch well, from from the get go. I but weird. The other night, I watched it for the first time. Really? Because I hadn't watched it. Um, because I thought it's better in, to have it in my memories than it is to sort of watch it. I don't, you know, watching twenty one hours of yourself is <laughs> even for me quite a task. <laughs> and so I thought, so I thought, oh, I'm not gonna watch it. And then um. And my girlfriend hadn't watched it either because we met just after we left, after I left the jungle last year. Uh, oh yeah, and, slid um, into them DMs, did uh, you? Hey, she slept, slept <laughs> right, right into my DMs. Absolutely wonderful. She hates it when I tell people that it was her that messaged me first instead of me messaging her. But it was definitely her. She sent me a cat emoji with a heart eyes. And if that's not modern love, I don't know what it is, guys. Sold. Sold, I was like, it was, it was it, she had me at cat heart emoji. And, um, yeah, and we, uh, and she didn't want, which was great because it, it, it she didn't really, she can't, didn't really know who I, who I was or what I've been through. And obviously at that time when you come out of the jungle, it's mental and you yeah. get so much sudden attention from a lot of random people, not necessarily sort of of the opposite sex of just anyone yeah. in, yeah. in. You're just so recognisable. Yeah, like, because everyone's been living with you for yeah, like 22 yeah. days. And think mad. they know you because they've been yeah. seeing you like every night. And then, and she, she didn't, which was great yeah. because we could just sit down as normal people and get refreshing. to know each other. Refreshing, yeah. It was so lovely, and um, and it's been going, it's been lovely. What a lovely year. So obviously, uh, your girlfriend uh, slid into your DMs. I'm sure you had a lot more, like myself and Melvin and Charlie as well. She thought you were brilliant on the show as well. We used to kind of monitor like your your oh, really? your, your social media, and it was just going up like an absolute rocket yeah. every single day. Like, how much did you go in with? Like I went in with, I think I went in with 12,000, something like that. Madness. And it's now on like 556. Yeah, you should just be like ticking up like constantly. <laughs> We're like, look, it's, it's going now, look, it's going now. It was, it was more like when I got out, because obviously people can't really post for you when you're in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or anything of any note. And so it, I got out and it was like on 150, I think. Which is still, that's it's a big still job. like a big leap. But then like, the sort of week after, it just went down to like 450 or something. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's so mad. The social, I'm really, I can't tell whether I'm, I'm terrible at it or good at it. Well, more followers means more DMs. Yeah. What's the, what's the weirdest DM? Oh, I got this, this is really weird. And I'm actually genuinely afraid of it. 
There's a man <laughs> who messages me uh, I'm, like I'm literally every day. I'm gonna say every other day, asking me whether he can wear my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> He's I mean, like, is that a euphemism or is that like... I don't know. <laughs> I think he wants to wear my skin more than my actual jacket. He always messages me and he always tries to casually do it as if... I'm, I've never messaged him back, obviously. <laughs> but he always messages and tries to play it like super chill. Like, oh, hey, man, how are you? Can I wear your jacket? <laughs> like, you, you look up and there's so many... All of the messages say the same thing. Just, but like in a different way. Just, I'm just wondering... Whether I could, were you judging? <laughs> <laughs> so odd. People are weird. People are weird. It's... Very, very weird. Yeah. But um, yeah, it is very odd. Situation. All right, let's. We've done the present. Yeah. Let's go back to the early days. Oh yeah. What were you like at school? When did you first get the comedic bug? Can you um, remember? I got my comedic bug, I think, from um, uh, from my best friend, who I'm still best friends with, and I was sort of the name best. Jack, name Jack. Uh, his name's Stephen Dunn, nice. and I, uh, I, he, he was like the funniest person in school. Like he was so funny, and he still is. He's just brilliant, and and he was such a class clown. And I was the, I was his friend, and so instead of being the class clown, I was kind of I spent years watching the class clown. I think that made the comedian in me in a, in a weird way. Yeah. And um, and I and I'm still friends with them now. I wrote, I wrote a show, sort of five years ago or so now, uh, that was about me getting my band back together. And I used to speak to Steve probably at this point once a year at Christmas, something right. like that. And um, I uh, and I wrote this show about trying to get the band back together uh, that I was in when I was 14. I was like, oh, that'd be a really interesting show if I could like. I just thought of the ending. I was like, oh, if I get the band back together, that'd be a really big, fun show. What were you called? What was the band called? And we were called Cyrus with a silent P at the beginning. Nice, yeah. nice. Uh, clearly, we, we didn't know Cyrus. This was <laughs> and we, we uh, so we wanted, so I thought, oh, that'd be a really good show. And so I called the show Finding Emo. Nice. And Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I asked Steve, because he was in the band, and I was like, uh, it was at Christmas, I was like, I'm thinking of, doing this show by getting a band back together. I don't know whether it's gonna be, it's gonna work or not, but I was just like, you know, I can replace you with people who aren't in the band or I can make the story work so you don't need to be there if you can't do it, but would you like to come with me to Edinburgh Festival for a month and and be in a show about getting a band back together? And uh, it, it was a show about sort of turning 30 and a sort of coming of age thing of yeah. like, I'm, I'm, I'm 30 now, no, I wanna get my band back together. <laughs> I was in, I was 14 to feel younger. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he was like, yeah, totally. I would love to do that. And so, and what started out as him just being involved in the ending ended up in me calling him every day and we'd speak for hours. Amazing. And he'd help, he'd helped not just in the ending and being there, but he helped in sort of writing the show. And he's a composer, so he writes music, but he just really enjoyed writing comedy. And um, we just really connected on, we had the same ideas and it was great. And so since then, we've written together everything we've done. We've written like scripts together. We've got one that's coming out awesome soon, and um, and we speak to each other every day. And and it's uh, he's my tour manager as well. No way. And so we go on tour everywhere together. He lives really close to me, and I just um, he came out to Australia and helped me write on the show. And I just do everything with him. And I'd, honestly, I without him, I would be absolutely nothing and no one. <laughs> I, he really gives me structure and and he's a really normal dude so it's yeah. you know so easy to get get sort of pulled into this mad world that because yeah, it is a crazy in. world isn't it and it's so easy to be a dickhead yeah like it's yeah. you can really understand why yeah. people become idiots totally because it's like it, it's so easy to just like people give you everything you want <laughs> and all this attention is and and it's so it's so weirdly disconcerting, and it's so easy to forget who who, who you are. So I know it's really deep and no, no, it's, yeah, I know say. exactly what you're saying. But it's so important to like keep someone or some people around you who aren't afraid to, to say like, oh, you're becoming an idiot. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like if I ever became a weird sort of celebrity. <laughs> Like immediately, Steve would be like, "What? The, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what, who have you become? Like, you're so..." And so it's nice wake up, John. Yeah, just slap me around the face. 
<laughs> and so I just I, I really like to sort of keep people like that around just to make yeah. sure that I don't ever sort of throw hot coffee over people because <laughs> they don't bring me a class on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, tell me about your first gig um, and your best memories of your first kind of performances and stuff. My first, first gig gig was uh, was in LA. I oh. went to because I was sort of involved in acting a little bit, and I, but I was really unsure about it. And because I just didn't really like it. Because you did Skins, didn't you? Yeah. You did Hollyoaks. Did all that sort of vibe casualty. stuff. Casualty. And I was kind of, didn't really like the vibe of it. It was all very serious. Right. And, um, and I didn't like the thing where you kind of wait for, for your agent to call you before you do anything, you know? Yeah. I was really, I was like a real go-getter. I really liked being busy and doing stuff. Yeah. And... Um, and then I became obsessed with stand-up. Like weirdly, I just, I just found a stand some stand-up comedians that I really liked, and then I downloaded everything that they had off LimeWire. Do you remember LimeWire? <laughs> LimeWire, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, you criminal! I know, right? <laughs> That's how my my comedy career started through sort of looting the internet. And um, and I uh, and I've since messaged these comedians, and I said, look, I'm really sorry, but I downloaded everything I knew of you <laughs> off LimeWire, and it started my comedy career. And um, and then I, so while I was in LA and nothing happened acting wise, I was, just, so I didn't, I didn't, and I, it made me realise that I didn't like that world. Yeah. And, um, and so I thought, oh, I'm going to need to do something that I'm proud of before I come home. And, and so I went to this open mic night at this place called the Rainbow Inn on Sunset Boulevard. Wow. Practiced all day holding a, a, a like cordless telephone <laughs> instead of a microphone. <laughs> and then uh, went there, did it, and it was fine. I remember it being fine. I remember it was like a, it was me and then a band and then and then it was like a comedian and a band, a comedian band, a comedian band. So, and then he had three minutes and they would turn the lights off if you went over three minutes. Right. So it was really brutal. And uh, and then I walked I walked out, walked down Sunset Boulevard afterwards. It was a real cliched moment of walking down Sunset Boulevard and going like. I want to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. So the went gig back. went well? Yeah, it went okay. And I think this is what <clears> happens with a lot of comedians. The first one goes okay. And the second one was so horrific. <laughs> it was so bad. I went back to the same gig the week after. Yeah. I was like, I need to do this again. And, uh, and I went back with this sort of little bit of confidence. Bit of swagger. Cockiness, bit of swagger. <laughs> And uh, and I did and I just I never I mean there was not many people there but they the people that were there just looked at me in such a strange fashion and then then I, then I left <laughs> this is, fuck you Joe Darby I mean it was I've never told anyone this before actually I remember, the one thing I kind of remember for that second gig is there was a guy with dreadlocks sat on a bar stool at the bar. And I was panicking, and there was because no one was laughing. I feel so. I was like, "Shit!" And um, there was a guy with dreadlocks, and I and I said to him something like, "Does it annoy you that you've been growing your hair for years, and someone could just buy a hat that looks like your hair?" And everyone was like, "What are you doing?" And, but then it was weird because I left that time, and it was a different feeling walking down Sunset Boulevard. But I was thinking like. Oh, this is cool. This is something that you can like get better at, yeah. and it's 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 you're not waiting for your agent to call you. You can just go, you can go out every night of the week and find a different gig and find a different place to just say stuff and yeah. just get better at it because it's it's not like a it's not like acting where you can have a child actor who is way better than you instantly. <laughs> right. It's like you have to just work at it, and I yeah. love working at stuff. And so, does that great. take away the? The kind of because I look at stand up comedians and think you're just amazing because it looks terrifying, like, yeah, so terrifying. Well, I think that's what's great about it is because people are afraid of it, and right. so it's kind of this sort of slightly exclusive club where it's kind of gated by this fear, you know. <laughs> and it's like it's it's great that people are afraid of it because yeah. it means that not loads of people do it, yeah. like sort of acting. I feel like so many people yeah. do it, and it's just like a wash of like thousands and thousands of people whereas stand-up is kind of it's uh it takes a bit of confidence to do it that first time and, it, and it's you know it's really not 
it was after a while you just lose your sense of shame and <laughs> you realize it's absolutely fine to die on your ass in front of loads of people so when you do because ultimately that's that's character building isn't it that builds, yeah. that builds your it builds your act it builds your kind of your brand so good to fit to, to fail yeah like it's so good i think i saw an interview with jimmy carr one time and he said he just he did so many gigs where he was trying to just bomb as bad as he yeah. could just so that he could like take it all on board and just be like right okay i know what it feels like totally now i can just go forward it's sometimes a really good gig I mean, a really good gig is brilliant for the song but it doesn't help anybody yep. because you, you've come away going like great it all works yep. whereas you just have like a bad or a fine gig and you go like okay that doesn't work that doesn't work that needs to be better that needs to be better that needs to be better and that was what was different for me doing I'm a Seb Extra show and suddenly doing live TV was so different because you just you don't have any time to reflect on it and you just have to do it and go like cool well i'm going to do a different one tomorrow yeah you know it's just you've got to not be as precious i think it's yeah. interesting so obviously we touched on it earlier mtv news mm. uh, we were both we're both like alumni of mtv news no. i mean who isn't who is <laughs> <Good point. laughs> so obviously you took over after i left um not took over from me but you big joined, shoes you, to fill you joined after i left um like i said i was pleased that you did and i, I liked what you did on the on the on the on the bullets and stuff. Oh, it was, it was so bad. No, it was fresh. I liked oh, it. Oh my god, I was so bad. I really bad. liked it because it was different. It, it, it had never been done before. Because obviously, before me was Tim Cash and we had Shantar, and you were just completely different. And it was just doing something new. And I liked that. I thought it was cool. Yeah. So. Oh my god. I mean, it's thinking back now. I feel you know your producer is sat here, and I I know we both know full well he also produced those bulletins. <laughs> I feel so sorry for him. They got had, James Bond. So it's like, oh my god. I mean, <laughs> tell me, tell me, what was it like doing recording the bulletins? What was it like? Because for me, it was just you go in. I'd have my scripts before. I'd go through my script. I'd go in. I'd mess up a few times. Yeah. And then I'd like you know eventually get one done. I'd mess up so many times. <laughs> And then all they do is talk about how good Laura Whitmore was. <laughs> Laura's good. Laura's good. <laughs> like, like, oh, Laura goes in and straight out in 30 seconds. You're like, okay, cool. 30th take for Joel because he can't read words. I was, oh, it was great. It was so good for me. And it was, it changed everything. Like, and I think it does, does for everyone. It's such an amazing yeah. breeding ground for, yeah. for incredible people. And it's, um, I, you know, you learn how to read at autocue and you, you learn how to interview people and yep. and you don't necessarily have people telling you that that's the wrong way to do it, that's the right way to do it. They just kind of let you do it and yeah. feel your way and go like, oh, that's the wrong way to do it, that's the right way to do it. And I would just like chat to people like and do like the worst, <laughs> in, like worst interviews, but great chat. <laughs> and I used to always, like I remember... Zero sound bites. I remember at the Brits once and there was... You know, and it's, yeah, it's, that's what the people want, the soundbite, isn't it? It's about, like, what the, what does this album mean to you? Or what does this song mean? And yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I remember we went to the Brit Awards. And um, and obviously, you know, it's a red carpet. It's very quick paced. And people are in and out. And you've got to, you know, get your questions in quickly. And um, and Blur were going to be there. Or, nice. or at least Alex James from Blur was going to be right. there. And it was a big thing. They hadn't done any sort of press for years. And... Lovely guy. Lovely guy. Farmer. So nice. And yeah. exactly. And I went and I just chatted to him about the fact that he he had uh, he made cheese yeah. because my dad owned a cheese shop. And I like talked to him about that for about a minute and a half. And then they were like, cool. Next one. I was like, oh, no, that's the worst interview I've ever done. I just talked to him about cheese. And it would constantly happen, like, oh, look, seriously, you've got to ask the right question. Because <laughs> it's completely unusable. <laughs> completely unusable. But, oh, it's so I mean, fun. It would have been fine if it was, like, the premiere of, I don't know, like, Kung Fu Panda or something. Yeah. <laughs> it was the Brits. It's the Brit Awards. It's big, it's big stuff, you know. And they were about to win, like, like Lifetime Achievement Awards. And I just talked to them about Brie for a bit. It was... Um, I learned so much and it's mad now, you know, what, six years later, something like that. How long were you there? MTV? I was there for a year. Okay. And it's quite an intensive, uh, when you're, you know, you know. A lot like, happens in a year, right? Yeah, MTV, you're there every day yeah. and, yeah. and, um, and it was, it was great. I just learned so much and it's, and it was my first real thing. Like I hadn't really done anything before that. And now, of course, you know, <clears throat> you know, like what to wear and how to look and, you know, 
I used to, I used to like cut my own hair. <laughs> like, honestly, I used to cut my own hair. I used to shave the sides. Like, and then I used to just let the top sort of hang over. I remember. This... I just thought you were being, you just had a trendy barber. Right, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. I used to like, have people be like, oh, it's like 10, 20 quid, 30 quid to like cut your hair. And I was like, that is absolutely ludicrous. I can do it myself. I just shave the side. It looks so bad. It looks so bad. <laughs> and um, do it sort of the back. I never even looked at the back. <laughs> and um, and oh, I just, uh, it was great. It was such a wonderful, wonderful thing. Cause I'm, and now it's like mad, six years later, I'm using those skills that yeah. I learned. Yeah. And you know, it wasn't, it was a really not an easy auto cue to read because no. it was like the camera was in front of you and then the your cue was like above a it. foot above it <laughs> yeah. and the camera's right in front of your face. It was like makeshift. So you can't look up because you're just like, the camera's looking I'm so up glad nostrils. it wasn't just me. I'm so glad. It's so hard. Like it was not, it wasn't the easiest, uh, easiest place, but it was great. And it was uh. so, the your cue was so close to your face that, yeah. you know, you, your head basically tracks back and forth <laughs> like a, like a sort of typewriter. <laughs> and uh but yeah laura, laura laura was great though laura absolutely smashed it every day so they basically went when you um so i said uh they, they were like oh we're gonna let you go and they, they literally they said and it wasn't in a horrible way no it they said been. you're so, i'm sorry but you're too old and see I that's like see i heard that and that is in, that is insane because i mean it's mad because how old are you I'm 32 now. So when you left, you would have been I was what? 27, yeah. 27. And it's, um, but I fully understand it. And then the guys who took over from me Much were younger. so young yeah. and they were like 18 and, yeah. and fresh faced and fashionable and like, <laughs> you know, and it was like, I was just turning up in a hoodie and like, like shave my own head. <laughs> And um, that's pretty much how I used to go in. Like, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then they got me doing, they were, <laughs> I remember, they were like, you should you should wear makeup because we haven't got a makeup artist. But you they should used wear to make. Makeup. I I was taught how to do. They me had, too. They had cutbacks just as I started. Yes. Like, right, we're gonna get Amanda Bowen to teach you how to do your makeup. That was it, Amanda. Yeah, Amanda. Yeah. I used to have to do my own makeup. I used to walk in looking like. A, do you remember um morph? Yeah. <laughs> so I used really? to walk in looking like morph. It's just plastered. I don't know what I'm doing. I had no idea. <laughs> my mum would be like, "What have you done to your face? Why do you look so weird on the telly?" I was like, "I don't know, mum. I don't know. I, I do my own no makeup." No idea. <laughs> I had no idea. I just went to this Mac shop and someone taught me how to put on this. I've still got the bag. I've still got the bag of makeup and I haven't opened it since. And it's like, oh my God. And I used to just go into that disabled toilet in the, in the MTV <laughs> and just put makeup. I had no idea. No idea at all. <laughs> and then, um, and then, yeah, so then, uh, so then I was wearing makeup. So I put on myself, shaved my own head, reading, reading all cute about, <laughs> about the camera. So tell me how you decided, like, when did you decide to put all of that, like any good comedian does, you take yeah. all of your experiences and put it into a show and make it into... Yeah, so it was really, I mean, my shows are like, it's, sort of, it's extended reality stuff so it'd yeah. be like you have a truth thing like I left MTV and they said I was too old and then you extend that to make it a funnier story and so actually with that to weave it into Finding Emo show yeah. I made that the catalyst for the story so I made it like they said I'm too old and I'm like oh my god I'm too old like right what are that? I'm gonna be 30 soon oh my god what should I do like and then so that was the catalyst for the show of me sort of um, wanting to get the band back together yeah. because then it, that's also another link to music and MTV and of course. and um, and so yeah so I've, I've just written a book and it's very similar it's a, you know all of the stuff happened but it's um, you know like you tell a, a story down the pub to your friends you sort of you make yourself a little bit more funny than you actually <laughs> are <laughs> but it's very exciting I've um, got an exciting day I need to tell you about the exciting day I'm like, when does this pod, when does this come out this is going to be out probably uh, Barnes I mean, it's, it's definitely not coming out today which no, is, no. so it's fine <laughs> um, I've got a very exciting day I'm going to tell you about my exciting day because I've not really told anyone about it I feel like I can tell you guys um, so I uh, it's our it's my and my girlfriend's year anniversary tomorrow congrats and the uh, I've written a book and it's basically all about it's all cased within and I love story and I love telling stories and I'm fascinated by it all and um 
so that the this whole story of the book is based within our first date so it's kind of Clever. me telling her stories and then the stories that are chapters and um and the ending of the book is uh, me proposing to my girlfriend. No way! So that's going to happen today. Oh my god! So Are you serious? Yeah, so she's read the whole book and I've ripped out the last two pages. And, and she finished it yesterday and she was like, what, is that it? Is that the end? And I was like, no, I've got, I haven't really decided how to end it yet. I need to talk to you about it. And then... Genius idea. Yeah. Absolutely genius. And Brilliant. And I told, I told the publisher, and I was like, oh, I'm thinking of doing this, it's the end. It's about, probably about three months ago now. I'm thinking about doing this, and it's the end. You know, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it because I want to do it, but I'm also yeah. doing it because it's a great end to a book. But it's, uh, <laughs> like, it's, uh, it's, but I'm very much doing it because I just really want to do it. Yeah. And it's, um, it's, I think it's a cool, and my publisher was like, yes, do that, do that. That's great for cha -ching, us. Cha-ching, cha-ching. That's great for us. And so, yeah, she read the book without the last two pages. And then tonight, so after this, wow, I'm going to go, I'm really, I'm really excited. I'm going to, I think, so I think the way I'm going to do it is I, you know, I'm not like a person where, we, and she, she isn't either, but the idea of doing it in public would be so horrific. <laughs> and even like when doing it on a holiday or something, it's such a cliche yeah, and it's just yeah. like, ugh, we're quite normal people. Yeah. And, um, and so... I th I'm gonna put on like a full um, black tie outfit, <laughs> which is a great start. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna put a full black tie outfit. She's coming over about um, eight o'clock tonight. Amazing. And uh, so I'm gonna answer the door and be in full DJ. <laughs> and then uh, I've got like a little meal that I'm gonna set out. And it's like, we only eat salads, we're so boring. So. <laughs> I've got, I've got this nice salad that she likes. It's so simple. I'm not going to cook her a meal or anything. I'm just going to get her a salad <laughs> from the local cafe and then put that and then, um, you know, like eat the salad and it'll be funny and that'd be nice. Yeah. And then, because it's our anniversary, so we'll just do that. And then I'm just going to, and then I'm going to read her the final two pages, which is phenomenal. Pretty cool. And then hopefully she'll say yes. And if she doesn't, you know what? It's a funny second book. <laughs> yeah, very it's true. A second book. <laughs> Great podcast. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm doing that today. That is amazing. Up top. Up Thanks, top. man. Good I'm, luck, man. Good luck. I'm really, I'm really excited. Like, it's just genuinely been the best year ever. And I'm like, you know, I've, I've been on the best tour of my life and had so much fun and written a show that I thought was really good and yeah. and I was really proud of it and uh, you know performed to like nearly a hundred thousand people and done the Hammersmith Apollo and d done live TV and like learned how to do that and yeah. and written a book like the idea that I could write a book is so mental to me it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life honestly honestly it was to such a stressful amazing process of like because I never went to university so the idea of sitting down and forcing yourself to write stuff and letting it be shit that's the, the hardest thing is that you sit there and and you write stuff and you go that's not good enough but it's okay I'll get it on the next draft right it's like really hard and um and it just took ages it really <laughs> took a long time and uh and I, you know, I was so straight. I was, I was touring at the same time, so I was like writing it in the day, wake up really early, write all day, and then literally like seven forty-five, I'd get into the, my tour stuff, and then go out on stage at eight o'clock, come off stage at ten o'clock, ten fifteen. I was in the car writing until like two in the morning. You know, wow. It was like that process for like a good sort of three months, really. Never got like writer's block or anything like that. There's definitely days where you, that's the thing you haven't got time to have that. And it's, and what I really learned is that you've, like, if something's bad, then it's okay because you polish it later. It's mm. fine. Like, the, the act of writing in itself is you're doing something and you don't know what that's going to turn into, but you're doing something. Yep. And um, there'll be so many days and, it, you know, when you read through the second draft, you go like, oh, that was when I was having a bad day and that was when I was on a run. But that second draft, you clear it all up. And then the third draft, you clear up all the other stuff and then the fourth draft you look at it as like a, an overview and you go like okay that needs to change and but it was such an amazing pro like I was so stressed I like got a sty for the first time in my life <laughs> I'd never had a sty before 
you know, it was, um, luckily I've been taught by MTV how to put makeup on, so I absolutely knew how to cover it up. Um, the, I was, uh, I was just so stressed and I'd never been stressed. You know, I've, I've been sort of stressed before a little bit, but not to this. You level. say you've never been stressed. Um, I've heard of a story. Oh, great. About a catfish. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was pretty stressful. <laughs> That's... Talk to me about the catfish, because I've been catfished a few times. Really? Yes. Like as in people trying, or is it if you've actually gone through with it? Um, uh, both. both. Oh, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Let's both talk about it. What so, happened Okay, so the, fir the first time I was ever catfished was, and this was my first, ex this was before the show, mm. before the documentary. So I was like kind of just finding out about this thing on the fly. Yeah. So there was a, a girl on Facebook and uh, she was, you know, she was very attractive. Yeah. She was very friendly. She was very, um, you know, just the banter was flowing. Was yeah. Like, chat, 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 chit, chat. Then it got down to the, you know, we should we exchange numbers? And she was like, oh, excuse, excuse, excuse. I haven't got my phones like not working or some kind of excuse. Yeah. I was like, well, let's just, I'll call your house phone. Oh, like the house phone's down or whatever. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Let's go for a drink then. She's like, okay, yeah, cool. Let's go for a drink. Um, I was like, okay, um, whereabouts are you from? So we figured out where we'd meet, like in, in like a, you know, like a, a place that was like, good for both of us and then literally up until maybe about I got really excited because I was like okay like this has been good for about a month I've been chatting to this girl for about a month I'm really excited excited to meet her it got to about two hours before the the meet and she just went radio silence just like just stopped oh, replying no. to like every message stopped replying to didn't re respond to any phone calls to nothing and then <laughs> so I blocked her obviously I was just like okay yeah you're, you're, an, you're an idiot whatever then about Six months later, <laughs> Melvin then says to me, oh my gosh, I got stood up the other day. And, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, by who? He goes, oh, look at this girl. And I was like, oh my God, it's her. Oh my God. So she God. just goes around just pretending to like. It's just like, what do they get? I just don't get I it. I don't understand what the point is of, of oh. I just don't get it. I don't get what it is. I mean. Because the pictures that are on the site are clearly not her, obviously. Yeah, no. Otherwise they'd meet you and otherwise, or they'd FaceTime you yeah. or whatever. So I guess this may be like, being able to live another life or live vicariously so. through somebody that it's, it's also, looks a certain way. It's a weird thing where like they get to talk to people who uh, usually you wouldn't be able to talk to. Yeah, like, maybe that as well. You yeah. know, because if it was just a random person who messaged you and said like, hey, how's it going? Do you want to go on a date? And it was really them. Yeah. You probably wouldn't reply. Yeah. You know, yeah. but it's like you've, they've had a chat for a month with someone who's unattainable, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's... Um, it's, oh, it was mad. I mean, it's, it was mad. Go on, I, tell me what happened. So I just came out of a relationship. And so, and again, it was, this was a while ago. So I was very naive to it all. And, and um, I would never, I wouldn't fall for it now, obviously. Because yeah. I've been burnt by a bit. Like, uh, this lady, again, very attractive. Obviously, she added me on Twitter. And um, we chatted back and forth. And she was very funny and yeah. and it was like too good to be true because it was not true you know <laughs> and um and then uh and she was like do you want to have skype sex and it was like straight away like it like and i was like yeah why not <laughs> yes yeah let's do this <laughs> and uh and again i talk about this all in my tour show but the and, and the book but the um i uh and so we did it and then it was kind of it was that immediate thing. You just make terrible, <laughs> terrible judgments when you have an erection. You just like, no good decision has ever been made. Like when you've got, like, it's just, and, and as soon as that, that <laughs> erection leaves you. Reality came away, back. You go, oh, I really, that was a bad decision. That was a, that, that was a bad decision. Because all of the blood from your brain flows to your penis. <laughs> So your brain is just completely drained of energy, <laughs> and, um, and, and, and I was, I was just, and I, but I thought, I thought the best of it. I was like, maybe it was kind of a weird chance encounter. Maybe it's fine, May, you know. And I forgot about it. I was like, it was always kind of lurking in, in the, the back, back of, of my mind. mind yeah. But I was like, ah. <laughs> and then, like three years later, I was be becoming a little bit more knowledgeable about. The, the world I, I know actually the way it happens and I say it differently in my show but I so I got so I added on Twitter by an account called Celeb Busted UK right and um, and 
it said, if we follow you, we have naked pictures of you. And right. I was like, what? Why would anyone have naked pictures of me? And then suddenly I was like, oh. Right. Okay, this right. is happening. Right. So I had a weird conversation with that person in trying to sort of obtain the photo. And they basically wanted money for the for the photos and stuff. And I was like, no, yeah. not going to do it. And, and Like then, an obscene amount of money. like Yeah, like stupid money. Yeah. And I was like, no, no, like, you know. And in my, I was like thinking... Everyone gets naked. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. And and also, I'm in that lucky position where I'm a comedian and I can talk about it. You know, I'm not a school teacher. Yeah. I'm not going to lose my job. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's fine. Yeah. And, um, and if anything, I can sort of talk about it and highlight it and hopefully make sure that it doesn't happen to other people. Yeah. And uh, it has. I know a few others. That yeah, this happened to. it's it's mad. It's, it's, it's really become it's an rough. epidemic. Yeah, it is. It and is. Uh, and it's uh, and so yeah. So they had, and we we sort of chatted about it. And I was like, oh god. And so I did what I know best, and I wrote a show about it. And so that that year's Edinburgh show was all about this 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 girl who got in touch with me, and then. That I needed an ending for the show because right. I, you know, I talked, and then what happened is I went on I'm Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, and they released a video instead. And uh, in fact, they sort of they hadn't released the video, but I knew there was a video of it. Right. They said we've got a video and we're going to release it. And I was like, Ugh. and that was <laughs> when I did the show. I was like, oh no, there's a video. So basically, I wrote the show as damage control because I thought, yeah, I thought it's going to come out at some point. Yeah. I instead of being like. Oh no! I can just be like, oh yeah, I've written an hour of comedy about it. <laughs> and um, best way, yeah, Diffuse just own the situation, it. yeah, totally. And so I did that, and that, but I needed an ending to it because I couldn't find her. I went to the police; they didn't couldn't really do anything because she's she really hot. She's covered her tracks essentially, yeah. and um, and so there was nothing really I could do. There was there was no satisfying ending. There was mm. no getting the band back together ending. <laughs> like, and so I. Um, so I, I got the photo, which she used as a profile picture. And, uh, and I was like, well, maybe I could find who that really is yeah. and let them know that she's using her face. And then yeah. maybe that'd be an ending. I don't know. Maybe I'll do that. So I, I did an, a Google image search on that person's face and immediately came up with someone different. And I was really? like, oh, well, cool. Obviously, yeah. So... Uh, and, her, and, and so I followed her on Instagram, the real person, the real person who I thought I was speaking to. Because the video that I did Skype sex with, it's very convoluted, but was actually just a completely different person. But you don't really notice because you were like, it, it, you, you know, you're sort of involved in it all. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you kind of go like, why? You just, you just think the best of people. You go like, why would someone? And I was, I, when the video, when the Skype video thing came up, I was like, they look slightly different, but, <laughs> but everyone looks different from their video, you know. And it turned out it wasn't a Skype. It wasn't actually a Skype. I wasn't Skype calling with anybody. It was it's just like a video. video. Yeah. And um, and I, you know, it was just like a porno goggle box. <laughs> Someone was just watching me watching porn, and um, and I, uh, and so I, I got in touch with that the real girl. And I said, hey, someone else is using your face to to catfish people. Just thought I'd let you know. And she was like, oh, yeah, it's been happening for years. And years. Um, yeah, they keep, I keep, sh I shut them down when they come back and they just buy followers and then blah, blah, blah. And then weirdly, we just kind of kept on, we kept on talking. And then I ended up dating her. Like, <laughs> no way. Yeah, Are you serious? Honestly. Shut up. <laughs> it, and that was my ending. And I just, and she was lovely. She was so nice. <laughs> And it wasn't right, but it was like, <laughs> but it was a great ending to the story. And so I ended up dating the face of the catfish <laughs> and we would constantly send photos to the catfish person whose account was still open. Right. And we constantly send photos with us together going like, hey, what's up? I'm hanging out with you again. <laughs> Brilliant. So great. Absolutely brilliant. So that all that's in your tour, in your, in yeah. your show? Yeah. So the tour show is like, a mixture of the last sort of five Edinburgh shows, really. Because yeah. um, when you go to Edinburgh, you write sort of an hour show. And so you I sort of a combination of all that. So so the Catfish thing is probably about half an hour of it and um, 25 minutes of it. And then the band getting together stuff is is the sort of main narrative across the whole thing. And 
So I've taken sort of bits and bobs from different bits and made a sort of hybrid show. And where are you gonna? Where are you gonna be? Where you? Where can people come and see you? Where do you get so, tickets? Yeah, because I've got. I mean, it was a hundred and thirty day tour, Insane. and uh, and That's it's just so towards cool. the end of it now. So so it would be finished by now. But um, I moved seventeen dates to do the Jungle Show. Right. And uh, so I've still got them coming up. So I've got 17 dates left. Um, 29th of December, I've got Wolverhampton. And then they just kind of, they sort of, yeah, there's plenty, they're on my website anyway, but there's lots of nice ones left. JoelDormit.com? Really yeah. Yeah. And awesome. it's, uh, and it's so good. It's so fun. It's, I couldn't even imagine, you know, <laughs> the idea of like being at this point now, when I was doing MTV, you know, when I was doing MTV and just sort of in that weird little hot <laughs> studio yeah. and like, <laughs> and then just being here now, it's just, you know, yeah. playing the Hammersmith Apollo twice. Amazing. Insane. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that it's all worked out to, to plan and it's all from here on in, it's all a bonus, you know, it's well, just you're great. absolutely smashing it, my friend. Now, obviously um, on the motto, we like to try and give back. Uh, that's a big thing of what we do um, and some of the money that we get from sponsors we then re-gift that to a charity of Great. our guest choice yeah so that being said who should we donate to on your oh, behalf that's so nice why? um uh, i would love to give to um meningitis now they are a great charity that um that deal with cancer no they don't they deal with meningitis <laughs> obviously and um, <laughs> they're a wonderful charity and uh i did some work with them this year there was was a guy who booked to see me on tour and um he was a big fan of me after i did the jungle stuff and unfortunately he died before he could see me on oh, tour right of meningitis and um so i've really tried to get involved with the charity and they've been so wonderful and uh Amazing. so yeah i'm just trying to sort of give back as much as i can that was so wonderful thanks guys that's so nice of you yeah no worries no worries now we end I don't want to end. It's been it's been amazing, but we have to end because time's running out. But we end with five set questions. Okay. Uh, the first of the set questions are: um, What is the biggest misconception about yourself? Oh, that I'm a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, the biggest misconception of myself um, is probably that I'm funny. Um, it's it's hard, you know as a comedian, people think instantly are they constant lols. Yeah. And uh, is that annoying? It's it's not annoying. It's, it's you know I fully understand. Like people think that a cleaner has a clean house, <laughs> you know, but they probably haven't because they clean all day. So it's like, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, uh, so yeah, I mean I'm you know I'm funny when I need to be, but I'm just pretty you know I'm pretty chill. All right, next question. Uh, when was the last time you did something for the first time? Time I did something for the first time. Um, I had oysters for the first time. Very really? recently. Yeah, in Australia. Okay. I'd oyster. I'd never had oysters before, and um, I just. Do, I, do they just? Did you enjoy it? They taste of drowning. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand it. You're like, oh, this is what drowning feels like. <laughs> Absolutely hideous. Did you have the have it with like the lemon and? Yeah, but it's like it's like that classic thing of like. You know, it's like porridge isn't very nice, but if you put loads of nice things on it, then it's nice. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, it's like you put loads of stuff on the oyster to make it not taste of oysters, yeah. then it's a nice thing. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't yeah. taste of what it is, <laughs> you know? It's like putting like loads of sauces and stuff on a disgusting oyster is like the equivalent of contour. Makeup, <laughs> <you know? laughs> Brilliant. Okay, uh, next question. Um, Who's uh, a person that you think we should interview on the motto? Ooh. Anyone. It could be anyone. Just give us a recommendation. Um, I would really recommend um, a comedian. I, I think I'm probably best to recommend comedians. <laughs> I would uh, I really recommend a comedian called Tom Allen. I don't know whether you've, you know of him. He's sort of, of him, very yeah. much sort of his, his star is rising. Yeah. Very, very funny man. And... Uh, just I wonderful. He was actually the first person I ever knew in stand up. Um, I just started and I did National Youth Theatre with him. And so I knew he did he did it before me, started maybe a couple of years before me. 
so I got in touch with him and went for coffee with him and he told me all these gigs to do and stuff and um and yeah, so I'd recommend Tom Allen because he's going to, I mean, he's going to be someone where in three years time, everyone's going to be like, oh, Tom Allen, household name. Right. right. He's brilliant. Okay. Yeah, he's really great. So All I'd right. Him. Awesome. Uh, if you could make a documentary, mm. who would it be about? What would it be about? Uh, what would it be about? I'd, uh, I'd, I'd probably make either two. I'd make a documentary finding the person who catfished me. <laughs> You know, I just I'd that like, would be a good documentary. It would be good. Um, I know people have tried to find that same person, so really? and sort of finding it difficult. But um, that would be interesting, just to find out who's got those pictures of my dick. <laughs> uh, or um, uh, I that, or a. I'd, I'd like to make a CrossFit documentary. CrossFit. I yeah. really like CrossFit a lot, and I do it a lot. And um, what's your gym routine like? I go pretty. I go sort of five times a week, something like that. Yeah. And I just do it for like an hour, hour and a half, and um, do like a mixed bag of stuff. Uh, go on, like, hit me, hit me. I think it's kind of that's the way to do it is to vary stuff. You know, just have a real mixed bag of. Because I'm not gonna lie, when you took your top off in uh, in the jungle, in I was like, bedroom. what the? <laughs> 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 I think everyone was like. What the hell? Yeah, Joe just... is ripped. You're like Willy from The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is great. I'm going to put that on my next door poster. That is going to be a quote from the back of the book. I, um, yeah, I just, uh, I really, I'm very, I'm, I'm very blessed with a, um, a quick metabolism, yeah. luckily. Uh, but I, uh, I just really like it. I really like, it's like part of my day and it's really healthy for me to have something else to be obsessed about other than comedy. Yep. And um, it makes me work so much better because it, like I found with writing the book, if if I didn't work out, I would be all over the place. Like my mind would wander. I wouldn't really write anything good. I'd really be, find it a lot harder to, to get something good out. And whereas if I work out, it's just your brain fires so much quicker. Yeah. And um, it's uh, it's great. And, it's, and I just think it's so good to be healthy and, yeah. So much of our lives is rotates around sugar and and terrible terrible things, and yep. it's like I feel like in fifty years' time we're all going to look back and be like, "Oh my God, yeah. that's what you ate!" Like, <laughs> yeah. Ugh. yeah, yeah. And uh, I just really think it's it's great to be healthy. I think it's really it's really completely changed my life, definitely. Um, and uh, so I think it's yeah. I've got an exciting new thing coming up with New Balance. So I've got like this new collaboration that I'm doing with them, which is really cool. Sick. And so I'm running the marathon with them, which is nice. Awesome. And then, um, and uh, Teenage Cancer UK as well. Uh, finally, what is your motto? Oh, my motto is, I think my motto is, I think this is something I learned on this, doing this new, um, new live TV thing and with stand up as well, is that prepare as much as you possibly can and then don't give a shit about it. I think yeah. it's such good advice. Yeah. Because so, so many times you get sort of so pent up with so much sort of anxiety about the thing. If you just let that all go, you're always so much better and just trust that you know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just like prepare as much as you can and don't give a shit. <laughs> it's I great advice. Yeah. That's... Joe, you've been absolutely amazing, Thanks, bro. Thanks, man. I've really enjoyed really fun. this. Really I don't fun. know whether it's been too long or too short. No, no, short. no. It's perfect, man. Perfect. I've really had fun talking in this very glamorous We'll do a studio. part two like in, a, in like yeah. six months' time, maybe. Let's year, absolutely year's time do or it. We'll have to see whether, I, to see whether she said yes Yeah, or. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, bro. Thanks, man. <laughs>